Welcome back to another episode of Harmonious at Lunch, the show that fuels your business success. I'm Brandon Gano, your host and guide through the world of harmonious business growth. Today, we're unlocking powerful strategies with industry experts to help your business thrive. If you're a business owner, entrepreneur, or executive, you are in the right place. Join me and our incredible guest today on the journey to clarity, growth, and success. It is time to revolutionize your approach to business. Let's dive in with another episode of Harmonious at Lunch. Welcome back to some more bite-sized business advice. We have everybody's favorite topic today. We're talking about profitability. Actually, I don't know. Maybe it's everybody's favorite and least favorite topic all at the same time. Money's a little touchy for some people. But anyway, we're going to unpack all of it. We're going to talk about how to run a business with less effort. That is my favorite personal topic. And I have an amazing guest I brought with me here to unpack all of it, Aaron Andrea Krask. So before we go any further, Aaron, welcome to the show. Thank you for being here. Well, hello, and thank you very much for inviting me. I'm looking forward to the conversation. Same here. So profitability, this might be a dirty word. The more that I think about it, the more I'm like, you know what? People may hate this topic. So let's unpack it. When you say we're going to talk about profitability today, in your words, what, what do you like to focus on around profitability? When I talk about profitability, there are a few concepts to bear in mind. So the first one, profitability is long term. It's not return on investment. It's not something that you're going to get immediately back. Profitability is built and is built as a cumulative, uh, cumul cumulatively, you know, it's like adding step by step, year by year to the final uh, weight, a uh, final worth of your company, because that's something that your company is worth. Uh, it's one thing that I believe people don't pay attention to. <clears throat> and another thing about profitability is that it's, um, it's more like a destination that you move towards mm -hmm. again, step by step. It's not, it isn't coming from sales. It isn't something that tangible that you can <clears throat> kind of, you know, come and look after every activity. It, it's a destination where you're going to, and you, it's a destination that is shaped holistically because profitability is something that comes from the way your company operates. So not just sales, not just KPIs, but it is a holistic approach to improving your business everything that works within so it end up in bringing profitability back to the business profitability is more about longevity of your enterprise so it's not again it's not about money it's not about that you're going to get back immediately it's indication of longevity of your business i love this because i was not expecting you to say that i've actually i don't think i've heard it described like that uh yet so I'm really excited to dive in. Everybody knows what the word profit is, right? That's, yeah. you can see that on your P&L. That is a, a tangible yeah. thing. You can, if you're manufacturing, it's your, uh, it, your revenue minus your expenses equals gross profit, right? That's an easy thing. You also mentioned ROI, uh, which people also very clearly understand. What do you get from investing from something? When you're talking about profitability as a destination, I want to unpack this because it, it's not just looking at your monthly p l It's not looking at your ROI. How do you start to build with your clients? How do you start to build a profitable business and get them focused on this long-term destination? Well, first of all, the most important thing, I believe, is change of mindset. Because the way we um, used to operate in business and in life is built on different principles that may not be the most, the easiest, and that back to the effortless or effortful thing that we mentioned earlier. <clears throat> Sorry. So the first thing is that um, we, when we run business, often we look at symptoms. We look at fixing something on top. Usually it's done through tra trainings, uh, application of best practices, looking at how tos we can do it we can fix it 
And so that that's one mistake that has nothing to do with profitability, nothing. It has anything to do with effortlessness of running a business. Another thing that we always, most of us pay attention to is immediate gratification and immediate gratification. This is your famous return on investment. We want it tomorrow. If we invest it into something, we want it immediately back. We give ourselves such a short period of time just to get this money back. It doesn't really work this way because profitability, again, is built step by step. You can't give it to a business and then immediately remove it back, right? It is an investment into your future and we don't do it. Another thing is that we often focus on sales, KPIs, and goals. So sales, something that we need to remember, that sales money is not coming from what we sell. They are coming from what people buy. That is very important shift because when you shift it, you will realize that people buy the end product. They buy an experience. And behind this end product and experience, you have the whole company, not just sales department. When you realize that you're going to come to this holistic approach to business, because that's what makes this experience for your customer or your client. The same thing comes to KPIs. You have KPIs very often that are measured immediate return on investment on certain activities. That is very often detrimental to business longer term, such over focus. While when we focus on goals, so that is another funny thing because Goals, they can be toxic, and even if they're not, what actually happens, if you think about it, <clears throat> when you put all of yourself and your business into achieving a goal, there's something I call striving, you really go for it, what will happen in the end of this process? The first thing, if you don't achieve it, Oh my God, my life, myself, and my business suck. And my team all together, right? So it's really, it's quite damaging for your self-perception, also for your mental health, because you've, you've given so much of it, you know, of yourself to get to this goal. Or alternatively, assuming you achieve it, what you're going to get back? One day of, yeah, wow, fantastic, celebrated, I achieved it. Let's set a new one. And you are back on the same, you know, path of striving towards the next one. So all together, it's actually all the things that I mentioned, they are quite challenging because they don't allow you to streamline your business toward the destination that, you know, we discussed earlier. So it is the change of mindset of understanding that the way we see it or we are conditioned to see it it actually is not beneficial for the business. And most more importantly, it's not beneficial for ourselves. Because at the end of this approach, you will get three symptoms that absolutely adore. So the first one is running like a headless chicken. The second one, being trapped in a hamster wheel. And the third one, being stuck in a rat race. Right. So all just, you know, turning our business into a zoo. And as a result, we're feeling stress. We're feeling overwhelmed. We're feeling insecurities. We start controlling because the whole thing becomes challenging, you know, to collect and kind of keep together. We start controlling our teams. We put more pressure on our teams. Then we put more pressure on ourselves because obviously we are underperforming. And that is what creates an effort. And that is what simultaneously deprives us, us of profitability because we waste so much of our resources. And I'm talking financial resources and human resources and time resources on just managing all the things superficially, you know, changing directions, doing here, doing there, you know, moving forward taking another breath and moving further forward, that actually we're running out of resources. We're not achieving what we want to achieve. 
And it's not about the longevity and how much we actually deplete ourselves, you know, just taking this journey. So that is the combination of making it effortful, but also not achieving longevity or profitability in your business. Yeah, I, I so love this conversation because uh, this is this is really what we focus on doing with with our clients too. And it's the same story every single time. The the KPI one, I was sitting over here trying not to laugh because- yeah, I, I saw you were laughing actually. <laughs> because we, we go into companies all the time. We're like, all right, what are your current KPIs? What are you measuring? All this fun stuff. Um, and then what makes me really effective, but also really annoying at my job is I, I tend to be lazy, which I have renamed as efficient. Okay. So don't, don't be judging me, but, um, I'll just start to ask questions and just say, okay, can I do this to achieve that KPI? And can I do this? Can I do that? I look at things from the laziest, most efficient way. Most people have their KPI set up around everything you said, sales, revenue, profit, not profitability, short-term profit, ROI. And someone could come in and destroy your company because they achieve the KPI, but destroy the brand or the brand mission at the same time. And we're not setting up holistic companies. So as you're describing this, I'm just thinking of so many different scenarios that that I've personally seen. I'm, you're, I'm sure you've seen 10 times more than that. How do you go in? Like what's, you mentioned mindset. What is the mindset you have to instill in the leadership team, the executive suite to go from doing more to grow your company and to be actually profitable long-term into actually doing less and, and not working so hard to get things done? What does that shift look like? Well, in my theory, profitability has uh, six pillars that all of them they can work separately, but they better work, you know, if they're covered together. And the most important thing with all of them is actually realize that there is a need to shift from how to's into why's, right? So the first thing, and again, probably the easiest one is instead of trying to fix symptoms constantly, because when you fix one, another one going to appear, something else. You need to fix it over there. You know, it's like putting band-aids or, I don't know, fixing a pipe, but then suddenly the corrosion and you have water, you know, running from another end and you have to fix it. So that's how it looks like when you start taking care of symptoms. If you look at replacing the pipe, you know, that probably you'll do it once and for all and it's going to be working without leakage for quite a long time. So the first thing is to learn to ask yourself why why is it happening why do we need so many kpis that you were you know talking about and actually are these kpis strategic or are they tactical because if they're tactical they are of no use because when you build your business around tactical short-term activities so you can immediately get whatever money back you can it's going to really impact your business because it's going to impact your customers. It's going to impact category margin. It's going to impact your resources because what actually happens that with every new short-term promotional activities, the return will diminish. It will never be the same. So it goes down, but then even with the second wave, it's not going to be as great because people get used to it, right? And then other competitors start catching up on your waves of activities, then you can't predict your cash flow because your cash flow is going to be very much dependent on your activity because customers are going to get trained, you know, to buy only on promotional items. Your promotional buy items going to bring your margins down. So you're not going to earn as much as it was projected to sustain your business. Altogether, it really doesn't work, right? So ask yourself why you're doing that. Or even better, you know, underneath, when we talk about profitability, I mentioned six pillars. So the first one, do you have a strategy? Do you know what strategy is? Do you know that there is a difference between strategy and tactics? And they're not the same thing, you know? So having a strategy is the first thing that really helps streamlining, you know, your business, your operations. It also helps planning your resources more efficiently. It also helps predicting or at least 
have any opportunity to predict mistakes or whatever the reaction of the market is going to be. So you're not taken you know, by surprise what I'm going to do now. It lets your team know where you go. It creates transparency. It actually comes with so many wonderful things that makes your business easier, but we don't do it, right? So that's the first pillar. The second pillar is leadership. There's one uh, saying that your business is as good as your leadership team, right? So instead of blaming on competitors or on the market or employees, you know, that my team is disengaged, it's not productive enough, uh, unfortunately, the best way would be to have a look at yourself first and foremost. So again, we go beyond how to's best practices to make my team productive. And we go beyond trainings, how to be a better leader. We go into our self-concept. Who am I as a leader? Who I aspire to be? Where does this aspiration coming from? Where is the gap? You know, I am, am I that bad as a leader or I just don't accept myself for who I am. And I can actually, when I accept it, make it much easier for myself. Because I don't have to live up to anybody else's expectation. Or, you know, I don't need to control so I can create the perception that I'm after. Then just you come from the place, okay, this is who I am. And I want to do best. I want to do best for my team, for my business, for my people. And then see how it's going to come from this place, how people will react, because I can bet they will love it and they will reciprocate. And then we talk about implementation. That is not my strength, but, you know, implementation requires two things, structure and transparency. There must be structure. Without it, it's not possible because that creates this additional headless chicken movements if you don't have it streamlined, you know, well organized. Another thing, a uh, pillar, <clears throat> and in terms of mindset, and we have already talked about it for a second, it is about people. So I have already mentioned that money isn't coming from what you sell, but what people buy, right? So it's about changing, switching your focus from this is me and my fantastic product or service to, okay, this is my customer, how I can make them happy. Nothing to do with you because they, they need to be willing to open their wallets to pay for it. If they're not, it's irrelevant how good your product is, right? Beyond customers, you'll have another two groups of people that need to be taken care of. It's your team and your partners, business partners. And with regards to teams and business partners, again, it's a little switch in mindset because often we think that these people are entitled, you know, that we pay them so they're supposed to work for us, which is fair apart from one starting point. Who needs these people first? Who is looking to employ somebody? Do they come to you first or do you have a need to start looking for people? So you need them to build your business, to contribute to your business. The same with partners. Do you need these agencies? Do you need distributors? If you don't, it's absolutely fine. You can deal without them. But if you can't, which means that you need them. And if you need them, well, treat them as human beings that contribute to your business, right? That's, again, it's just, you know, there's nothing really crucial about it. It's nothing dramatic. You have this mindset shifts here and there to understand who is actually driving or what is driving your business. And when you start changing your perspective, things start falling into places. We have two pillars that I cover very quickly. One of them is contribution. And I'm not, I, I am talking about purpose-driven businesses, but it's not for the sake of sounding trendy. I'm talking about mental health and motivation. 
and resilience and having an engaged team and having um, hiring the best people and retaining these people, not because you offer them perks, but because they live what you do. They leave the meaning of your organization and they're willing to contribute. I had a conversation this morning with a guy who works with organizations and he just sends emails, I think once a week. And because you pay for every employee to get this email, but he's planting trees from every email sent to employees. The open rate, I think around 85% of these emails and the whole organization reportedly comes back closer together because they know that from every interaction, everything they do, everything they implement, you have more trees planted. It's simple. It works better than sustainability training and department because people feel the tangible purpose of what they do. And again, it affects you, it impacts your mental health positively and it impacts your resilience. And it allows you to deal better with stress because you have a higher meaning behind what you do. And the six pillars, growth mindset, personal growth. That is probably the most drastic and dramatic change because you stop being a victim and controlling victim, but you become a driver of yourself and of your business. And being a driver, yes, it comes with responsibility, like any freedom, they all come with responsibility, but it's much more empowering, you know, and instead of facing challenges, instead of asking why, you know, why it happened to me, this is the only place where instead of why you can ask how to, how I can make it better. So those are six pillars, and this is the change of mindset that you were asking me about. I love it. I mean, you, it's clear to see how powerful that can be when instituted in, in a whole organization. And I love the analogy of the trees because that's goes back to what you were saying earlier. It's, you know, profitability is long term. You, you don't plant a tree today from seed or sapling and have a 50 foot tree tomorrow mm, or true. even in Excellent. 20 yeah. years. I mean, that's, you're building this long-term thing. So um, I, I absolutely love this. I wish we could unpack this more, but uh, we are out of time. So if you want more, Aaron, I know I do. There's a link in the show notes down below in the description, Aaron, you have a number of things. You have some freebies, downloads, all that stuff uh, in, in the show notes down below. So please, if you love this episode, go take advantage of that. Um, Aaron, I do have one more question though. And that's a question for a question. So you can tell, from the giant lit up question mark behind me uh, that is very obnoxious that I love questions. And we love, and what if we love powerful questions, powerful questions get powerful answers. And that's a philosophy that I want our listeners to leave with. So from this episode, from building that long-term profitability um, and building a company that's really meant to last and, and it's not about instant gratification, the purpose-driven company, what is one question that you would want the listener to ask for the rest of the day so that they can remember this episode and help them launch their business forward? Um, what stops me from getting better or what stops my business from getting better? Mm, I, oh man, I hate this segment because I have a new favorite question every single time. No. <laughs> this is getting so hard. Aaron, thank you for thank that. Thank you. Well, it was a nice compliment. Well, yeah, thank you. <laughs> That was amazing. Oh, I'm going to be thinking about that for the rest of the day for sure. Aaron, thank you so much for being here. You are a phenomenal guest. Thank you. Thank you for inviting. And for you watching, listening, wherever you are, make sure you subscribe, comment your takeaways, and more importantly than anything else, ponder that question for the rest of the day. You will get a powerful answer. And that is the whole purpose of listening to this show. We want to see you tomorrow on the next episode of Harmonious at Lunch, but thanks for being here.